Welcome to this week's vlog. This week we're going to talk about hook sets, battles, drag settings, how you how you handle those particular things. You know what's interesting? The drag setting alone, setting your drags, there's really two schools of thought in the drags, the way I, I see most people and the way they set their drags, especially on the musky end of things. And it really goes this way. You got the, the one group of anglers that sets their drags way too soft. And, and when you set your drag way too soft, you, you, you essentially negate all of your power, all of the rod's power to set the hook, all of the line and the hook's, the hook's power to set the hook, and you'll lose a high percentage of fish because you actually are overly worried about line breakage and, and you know, a fish's ability to run and, and, and catch, you, uh, catch you off guard. And because of that, you set your drag too soft, and you end up losing a lot of fish. Most guys that lose a lot of fish have their drag set too soft, okay? Then you have that other camp that sets their drags too tight, too tight, so tight in fact that you know they actually. I've seen some guys that bass. It's probably started in bass fishing, and I know it had a lot to do with the uh, advent of the, the the braided power lines today. The fact that they're so strong that people can crank their drags down, even take a pliers to them, and actually winch down the star drag too tight. And both both of those extremes are wrong because if you set your drag too tight. You end up something's got to give, and and what happens? And even if your line doesn't break, you bend hooks out, you overpressure the fish, um, you end up losing just as many fish because you're, you're you especially big ones, and you, you can actually run the risk of actually getting yanked overboard, which I've ha had happen several times on big fish myself. And in in one case, yes, my drag was set too tight, and the other, the drag didn't function correctly. <clears throat> So what's the answer to the drag? Well, the answer to the, setting the perfect drag, you know, the perfect drag on a reel would actually adjust if you think about it. When you make a cast and the bait first hits the water, you want a drag completely locked down tight because you don't want any drag slippage. You don't want any, when you go to set the hook, you don't want any line slippage at all. So you want that drag set, you know, locked down tight. And then, of course, as your line comes closer and closer to your rod tip, the perfect reels drag would actually loosen. So if a fish strikes at both sides, you'd have a, an, a looser drag because you have less line out and you'd want more forgiveness. Now, one last thing about drags, by the way, before we move on is, you know, you, your third, you have a third drag in your reel and that's your rod. If you're, if you're using a rod that has some flex in it, especially these longer rods today, you have a third drag system. Having a little line stretch which is common, you know, with some of the saltwater fish, and in monofilaments and and uh, and even fluorocarbons, you have a little line stretch. But of course, with braided lines, they have very little to zero stretch, so there's no forgiveness in the line itself. Yet your rod and the bend in your rod is your drag, and your movement with your arm and your your body when a fish is fighting. You know, when a fish, if you got the the rod bent and you're fighting a fish, the rod is bending to absorb the you know any excessive pressure as well as you moving with the fish during the fight you're moving with your body along with the rod that will also help <clears throat> create that third drag situation and that's your emergency drag setup so always remember that that you can create your own drag and absorb the shock power of a sudden bolt on a big fish or bolt side strike whatever just by having that longer more flexible rod and and moving your body as well and you know that's that also is an argument for by the way for the longer rod with some flex the heavier you go on the action the less less bend you have in the rod the more yeah you might have a, a, a more power on the hook set arguably but if you don't have flex after that hook is set and you want flex after that hook is set the, the if you don't have flex you'll have a tendency to overpressure your fish so a rod with flex is good. <clears throat> think about this, folks. Think, you musky anglers out there, think about this. And those of you who don't think any flex in a rod is good, think about how much bigger tarpon are than muskies. Just tarpon, you know, saltwater fish in general. How many big tarpon are caught on fly rods? And you land them no problem at all because once that fish is hooked, you want even rod bend pressure on that fish so the fish can't throw the hook. So let's move on to another part of the of this discussion and that is hook sets 
and 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 how you how you react to a fish during during the battle. Hook sets. Now on hook sets, one of the things I always I always talk about when when you're when you're casting and retrieving your lures, and, and how it relates to your hook set is is always face your lure. And don't don't create any exaggerated angles when you start your retrieve because if you do that, you're already taking away some of your hook setting potential. Okay, face face your lure. But when you're power fishing big game fish, it's face the lure. When the fish strikes, rod goes down anyway, and then it's it's a upward movement of your arm along with a rotation of your body, all in one movement. So it's bam. And then the other thing, by the way, in hook sets. <clears throat> Is don't double double set. Um, yeah, yeah, I still see people even on, on on videos and stuff where they're hooks and they're hooking and they're setting and they're going like that. And what happens when you do that is you're 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 putting too much pressure and then not enough pressure, especially on the backswing to get lined up and get that next set. Your best hook set is that a good solid rotation. Keep the rod bent and just keep even pressure on the fish. Keeping even pressure on the fish is is so critical because. And, and you know it, because when a fish is fighting, if the rod is is in constant even pressure, even if you didn't get a good hook set in the beginning, the hook will eventually set because of the weight of the fish. Now that in fact moving along on that, if you know once you do set the hook on a fish, if you have a lot of pressure from the fish itself, that usually helps set the hook. But if the fish is coming at you, well uh, you have to read every strike. If a fish is coming at you, of course, then it's like. Once you've turned, you have to speed up and even take another step back to catch up, catch that fish, catch up to that fish, and keep that even pressure on the fish. Now, as you're battling the fish, here's a good rule of thumb. Fish, this is something I learned in saltwater fishing many years ago when I fished a lot of saltwater with my grandfather when I was just a, just a toddler in the 60s and early 70s. And it, it, it goes like this. Fish down, rot up. Fish coming up, rod down. So when a fish is jumping or, or, or coming into a jump, rod down. When a fish is diving down and, and, and pulling line out, rod up. And if you just follow it, if you just watch your fish during battle, you behave in, if you you're just if you're watching the battle and concentrating on the movements of the fish, you can see what it's going to do, especially big fish, you know, because they do things a little bit slower and more with a purpose. So when you see the line coming up, I learned this in bass fishing, by the way, even with spinning gear, I, I hook a fish and I can see that line come up as that bass is about to jump, down goes the rod, and and even, you know, even exaggerating putting the rod tip in the water to, to destroy the jump. And in fact, what you can do, and what we've learned a lot, even with saltwater fishing years ago, is that you not only lead your rod tip down to a really big fish on the jump, but also is to rotate downward on the strike and, and on the on the rise of a big fish and you actually destroy their ability to jump. And you'll do that, by the way, as soon as they're jumping by pulling downward and then rotating your body, you'll pull them out of the jump. And it's uh, it's it's a technique that will help you keep fish hooked because when fish start coming up and shaking their heads, if you keep your rod tip high and you're cranking like this, you're, you're allowing that fish to shake even faster and harder and you'll create slack in your line. Those fish will throw a percentage of those lures if they get out. Now, sometimes it, it's, it's, a, it's unavoidable because fish are, are fast, especially smaller fish. Bass are famous for that. Smallies in particular, they're, they're, they're airborne before you even know what hit, what hits you. Fish hits, fish is already airborne, boom, and it's gone. But if you're, if you're uh, you know, when you're fishing these bigger fish and you're battling these bigger fish, when you see the line coming up, rod tip down. Fish taking a dive, rod tip up. <clears throat> and in fact, when the fish hits that boat side, exaggerate the down and make sure you even submerge your rod tip in the water so that you help keep the fish in the water. Keeping the fish's head submerged underwater so it's fighting the water helps keep the, keep the fish hooked. It stops that that overly exaggerated fast head movement, so it's got to fight the water. When a fish comes out of the water, it it, it shakes faster, and, and you're going to get more lost fish by by uh, allowing that fish to come out. When you have an eight nine foot rod and you have the fish cranked to the rod tip, and that fish is out there away from the boat fighting, it's so much more difficult for a net man to get into position to land that fish because the fish is away from the boat and cranked up to that long rod that rod tip. You can't get them close to the boat. So I, I always prefer 
you know, to, to keep a length of rod, to keep a length of line about as long as the length of the rod out from the fish and, and pull my fish upward, pull my rod upward and pull the fish to the boat so, it, so the fish is right next to the boat and making it much easier for the net man to net the fish. <clears throat> and if the fish makes a sudden uh, lunge, you know, it's so easy to just let the rod and that length of line absorb that, that, that run at both sides. And this really comes into play when you're fishing with spinning gear. I mean, I, I, you know, growing up fishing with lighter tackle and spinning gear and fly rods and stuff like that, you learn that that's really the way, way you have to fight fish. When you're fishing, you know, a lot of guys that just got into the musky game and didn't fish with light tackle have a tendency to, to land fish. You know, it's almost a pan, they're in panic mode and they crank the fish to the rod tip and they reach way up on the rod and they pull the fish like this. And they're, yeah, you're trying to, they're, you're actually leaning and the guy's way up in front of them and they're trying to get that fish to the, to the net. And that's the only way you can net them when, when you fight them that way. But if you do it the way I was just explaining, keep a length of line out, good bend in the rod, pull the rod tip, with the length of the line, pulls the fish right to the boat, makes it real easy. And by the way, that is the way to land them by yourself. If you look at all the videos uh, on my YouTube show, and over the years you've seen me on television, land a lot of these big muskies myself. And the only way you're gonna land them by yourself is to have a length of line out, high rod, so you can bring the fish to the boat and then one hand on the landing net and net them. You can't do it with, with the muskie cranked up to the rod tip and it's still eight, nine feet, 10 feet from the boat. Can't do it. It's, it's much more difficult and you're gonna, you're gonna lose a lot of those fish by doing it. So wrapping it up, <laughs> you know, you've got, when you're, when you're, when you're uh, talking about, about fishing in general is, you know, you got set your drag properly. Set it. The, the the best setting on a drag is just below that that pull point where it, where where it won't come out. I like my drag set a little tighter than too loose. In fact, almost too tight. The best way to set a drag, by the way, is to have your partner grab the line safely with with it wrapped around his, his, his some clothing or a glove, and then pull on it like like a fish would, not setting it from your reel. And then you set the drag tight until you, he can pull that or she can pull that line out under pressure. And that usually makes, you know, you make, that's, makes for a great hook set and a good, um, good drag setting that you know, you know is set strong enough that it's going to put a lot of even pressure on that fish and wear it out faster, but it's not going to put any pressure on your tackle. Okay. Then during, your, during the battle with the fish, when you go to, for the hook set, hook setting is face, face the lure when the fish strikes. Up with your rod, with your with your forearm, and in, in in that Popeye motion like this, and then rotate your body, and then of course during the fight, fish comes up, rod goes down, fish goes down, rod comes up, fish gets to the boat, high rod to make it easy for the for the net man when it's time to net the fish, net the fish with a high rod so that you can bring the fish closer to the boat. And one last tip, of course, is if you get a boat side strike on a figure eight and you have very very little line out you know, submerge the rod once the fish strikes and actually figure eight battle, figure eight the actual fish during the battle. And that's, I've said that many times, that how do you keep those fish hooked on figure eights? Actually figure eight the big fish on the battle. One last tip, and try to avoid landing a fish being downwind from a fish on a big windy day. If you're in a situation where the fish is upwind from you, and that fish gets upwind from you, it's very difficult to bring that fish to the boat because the boat is always drifting away from the battling fish. Try to keep your boat on the upwind side of that fish so that the wave action and the wind action is, is blowing you at the fish and taking you to the fish. If that fish is on the upwind side of you, it's much more difficult to land. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this vlog. It's a little bit different. Yeah, but it, you know, those, these are subjects that, uh, these are things that every one of us anglers are gonna deal with and we just dealt with a bunch of them here. Have a great day.